Okay, what we got here is a uh, an old P4 MSI motherboard, um, P4 uh, 2.4 gigahertz processor. Um, I've had this uh, board and chip probably since 2000. I've retired it out of a media center machine that was used to be in my living room. So uh, what I'm going to try and do is uh, revive it. Uh, I was having some issues with it locking up and and other other weird things restarting. Um, so I did do some cap repair on this before, probably several years ago, and um, the ones I replaced are the, the ones I replaced are uh, the black ones here, and uh, I think I replaced this one, this one, this one, and I think maybe that one. So I'm gonna ESR all these caps, find out what's going on. You can tell this one here is bulged, so. I'm going to mark that one as a definite replacement. I'm going to ESR them all out and uh, see what's going on. And see if I can uh, see if I get anything in any other boards that I might be able to just put in here for now. Uh, I might end up uh, changing this into a server board downstairs uh, in another machine. So, um, and then I'm going to check the uh, Antec power supply that was running this board because uh, that's also around the same age, and I want to check the caps on that too to make sure I'm not throwing any dirty. DC into this, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll check that out too. So I'm gonna ESR for these caps, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. All right, so I changed those caps out, the uh, ones that were here. Uh, I do believe it was this one and this one. Change those all out. I mentioned the other ones. They were seem to be okay, so I'm gonna leave them alone for now. Let's see what's going on with the power supply. If there's anything even wrong with the power supply, um, but uh, yeah, these are these are tricky. You really gotta heat the board to get these out of here. Uh, I had to use a combination of my hot air rework station and um, my um, Hacko Hacko whatever you wanna call it 808 uh, desoldering gun. Um, I heat the uh, the solder joint with my hot air rework station to get the board warm and then I just uh, put my solder sucker on the joint and pulled it up so um, yeah that's good so all these measured up okay and um, everything looks good here so I'm gonna move on to the power supply I have to clean this out too alright so I've pulled the power supply apart the uh, computer power supply I think it's like a 400 450 watt or something. I don't know, somewhere in there. But uh, the thing you want to check for in the power supply is the filtering caps. Uh, look at that one. Um, I did take a few out already. Um, sometimes these, uh, you don't want to have to take all a bunch of uh, stuff apart. Sometimes you can just kind of bend back the, the back case a little bit and uh, the board will be able to come right out of there. Um, it doesn't hurt it or anything. You just bend it right back into place. I mean, these little. <coughs> Pro plate there uh, uh, makes it a little bit easier uh, for it to flex. So uh, this is what I usually do, and it doesn't harm it in any way. So uh, uh, yeah. So this is probably why the capacitors on the motherboard are failing. Um, not only that, but the, the the capacitors on the motherboard that failed are right next to the heat sink for the processor that uh, has a lot of heat there. So. That is a that's something to consider too, and sometimes it's just a brand of capacitors. Um, sometimes there's a bad run or whatever, but uh, we're not going to get into that. So um, I pulled out uh, one, two, three, three known bad capacitors. To, uh, I checked on my uh, my ESR meter over there, and the rest of them looked okay. So if I can find some uh, spare ones, I'm going to put them in there. Or I'll just have to order some more. It should cost under, I don't know, five bucks, five, ten bucks to recap this power supply and it'll be good as new. I'll clean up the fan, maybe, uh, I don't know if it's a bearing or not, I'll have to find that out, maybe throw a little oil on that. And uh, so here's a little tip for, um, you know, when you're pulling out multiple capacitors, if um, when you're going to change capacitors as a supply, you don't want to just have to change one at a time, is you can draw out a little diagram of uh, what capacitors went where. I uh, have 6.3 volt, 3300 mics, 10, 3300, 10 at 3300, blah, 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 whatever.
whatever, or sometimes if the board is marked, um, if you can visually see it, um, you can get the location part number and put the value like uh, right down there C31 whatever uh, I couldn't see those until I pulled it out because all four of these caps were group grouped together so that uh, that makes it a little easier that's just a little tip if, uh, if, if you want to do it another way be my guest but uh, what I found let's see if I can rotate this out of here now makes it easy to See, so, you now you can just you can bend that back. See how flexible that is? That's not going to hurt it. So, um, what you do? So I've got a, um, a desoldering down here. I've actually got a um, Hacko, 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 whatever the hell you want to call it, 808 desoldering gun. <coughs> Built in uh, vacuum pump. And uh, I think the, uh, the element's about 80 watts, 85 watts. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, somewhere in there. So uh, basically, you just put the uh, tip of it right on the solder joint you're going for. Let's see if I can get in here. Put it right on it. Wait till it melts a bit. There it is. That's it. It totally unsoldered it so it makes it easy when you're doing a lot of cap work I mean that's the most common repair you're gonna be doing if you're doing electronics I'm telling you the most common thing you're gonna you're gonna be replacing is capacitors that's just without a doubt um, capacitors and um, the second thing would probably be uh, um, depends on what device uh, you're working on you know uh, diodes and transistors but uh, you know they hardly fail unless there's a real uh, problem but um, usually capacitors when they fail if they're filtering DC uh, like they're doing in here they can cause problems in the motherboard and I was having lots of problems with the motherboard restarting freezing up um, all sorts of crazy stuff and that's related with the bad caps on the motherboard and the power supply because the, the, the DC was definitely not filtered uh, correctly and uh, it, it does uh, make a huge difference if you go through some of your old equipment that's uh, been giving you trouble and you don't want to throw it out you know it's a good machine and you want it to throw five or ten bucks into it um, there you go so eventually once I get everything back together and find pots uh, to put this back together I will uh, post a video of the uh, actual um, PC that this goes into and fire it off and maybe we'll load windows into it or something or, uh, or Linux or whatever I'm going to use this for, I'm not sure, but that's it. Alright, so just to show you some of the uh, bad resistors on the ESR, I mean not bad resistors, bad capacitors, I'm going to uh, show you a couple here. This is uh, one of them there. I don't know if this is zooming in quite right here. five point seven or oh, way out of spec so that, that's a bad capacitor and that one's obviously blown because it has uh, you know bulge on it it's got some crap flowing out of it seeping down the side um, yeah I mean sometimes they'll be visible sometimes they won't don't always go by the bulge and leaking um, that does not always uh, tell you if the capacitor is good or bad in most cases sometimes it can but it, it uh, uh, other times you'd be surprised you'd have a perfectly looking cap perfectly fine looking cap and it will be uh, it'll be out of spec so here we go here's another one okay this one has got a uh, 2.2.0 and it's bouncing around a bit it's, uh, my leads probably not touching correctly but uh, yeah this is just let me see if I can get that a little better all right, yeah, 4.8, definitely a bad cap for the value given. Um, now I'm gonna put a good cap on here, follow the same supply, and this should read really, really low. Yeah, 0 0.01. Yeah, that's that's a good cap. Um, now, does that say should I put this cap back in? Uh, you can, 
but um, you know if you're gonna do it you might as well change them all out because you know these are gonna be the ones gonna fail and the ones you replace they're gonna be the ones that last so uh, it's good to do them all at the same time so you're not doing the job twice um, so I mean this cap reads good but it may not in another year uh, you know so it's uh, it's totally up to you you can do it but I would suggest to just recap it so, uh, and uh, you know all the rest of them pretty much read the same way so um, yeah it's nice to have a couple of tools handy uh, you know to do this job you know an ESR meter um, if you don't have one you can use a capacitance meter but uh, it's not it's, it's not going to be an accurate test for the quality of the cap it may tell you if the capacitance is low or not um, you know definite you can tell by the bulge but like I said you can't definitely go by that um, so I mean it's, it's nice to have a couple of tools I think I got this off Fleabay for I don't know around 70 bucks it wasn't like, all that expensive and uh, you know if you want to get a desoldering iron I think I got this Hako Hako off of eBay I think it was under under 100 and 150 somewhere around that range um, so yeah I mean you get a, if you got a soldering iron uh, desoldering braid whatever uh, solder sucker that works too you don't have to go out and buy all these crazy things or if you just want to you, what you can do is if you have questionable caps just recap the whole thing and you don't need a tester. Uh, it's not going to guarantee anything, but uh, it's a shot in the dock. So um, that's it.